Okay. <laughs> the preamble. Isaiah 38. The sign of the prophet. From God's new book. That he titled, and I tie it, Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Dictated to me at his command and direction, just as he did with Moses <coughs> for writing the Torah. And what your rabbis don't know is he also had every one of the 20 some odd prophets of the Book of the Prophets write their books at his command, direction, and dictation of each of their individual books, and probably had some of them. Uh, he probably dictated, commanded, and directed that they uh, write down the books of the writings, Nehemiah, Ezra, Chronicles 1 and 2, etc. There might be others, I can't think of them right now. <clears throat> and um, none, none of them. Because you, you can see how the books go together. To know this is the day of the Lord, and it is, uh, you had to, you want them by chapter? You had to know Isaiah, Jeremiah in particular, um, all of Ezekiel, and of course Malachi 3, where God announces the day of the Lord. Because there's, and he, he says in Malachi 3, verse 1, the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. Well, there's no question that's the covenant of Jeremiah 31, 31, which is the covenant of sin forgiveness and the inequities. Um, and they and Moses could not have known the information Especially Isaiah 53. It's just too complicated. There's too many facets to it. Too many purposes. For somebody just to wake up one morning Isaiah and write that of his own. And he didn't. The entire Hebrew Bible is God's book. For his people. That's the Christians that attached to their New Testament. Because he is not happy about it at all. But since Jesus is a myth, there was no human sacrifice. And God wouldn't accept a human sacrifice anyway. Uh, they're not sin free. And there's no heaven for the Gentiles. If they want to see heaven, they're going to have to see the Jewish heaven and convert to Judaism. Tell that to Spain of the Inquisition, making the Jews there convert under torture and death and expelled if they didn't. Yeah, back at you, Spain. And anybody else that tries to convert a Jew to Christianity, Christians, missionaries, chapter 38, the sign of the prophet, Oh, and I, just just as Moses and the prophets and anybody else he used, King David may have done, uh, may have been told to, to write down Samuel 1 and 2 and Kings 1, I think it is. Joshua commanded and directed to write the book of Joshua. The whole book is God's. And so is this one. And I couldn't know the information in this one. Matter of fact, you can't find a rabbi that knows the information in this one today or at any time in the history of Judaism. They don't know what a man in divine beings is. They don't believe the Holy Spirit is a person. They don't know what a host of the Lord's host is. Etc., etc. God's got a top ten fallacies and false teachings by the rabbis in Judaism. Top 10. Just like he's got a top 10 of the lies of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. 
from the Rambam's Jewish Practices and Rituals. The Laws of the Basic Principles of the Torah. Chapter 10, 1. Chapter 10, Part 1. We tell him to predict the future because he is a prophet, which he does. And we wait to see if what he says happens or not. Even if it was wrong and only a small matter, he is a false prophet. But if all of what he said comes true, then he is believed. It's not what a prophet is. He's saying they're like a seer, somebody who can see the future. Nobody has ever seen the future. The prophecies of the Bible are God's prophecies, but they're based on his absolute knowledge. He knows how humanity is going to evolve from beginning to its end. It's his uh, reality show, so to speak. And the script is his book, the Hebrew Bible, that he had written for his chosen, his children, his bride. And Christians took it. Said uh, to the Jewish people, y'all, this is prophetic of Jesus Christ. Y'all don't know how to read your own book. Well, the truth of the matter is, it's not in any shape, manner, or form prophetic of Jesus Christ. If so, why do they have so much lies and deceit in their New Testament trying to conform to what the Hebrew Bible uh, says and changing it? Jesus certainly did. From chapter 10, part 5. If a prophet says about another prophet that he is indeed a prophet, then he is assumed to be a prophet. And the prophet who said it does not have to be cross-examined. The righteous servant of God of Isaiah 53 is a prophet who serves God with devotion to his purpose. He is the fulfillment of this prophecy of Isaiah by his description. He is not a prophet who predicts, predicts the future like a seer. If God speaks to you and you speak back, you're a prophet. That's what a prophet is. He is a servant, just like Moses and Joshua and like Elijah and Elisha. From chapter 10, part 5. Moses vouched for Joshua, and all of Israel believed in him before he performed a sign. <laughs> That's God's book. Well, that's just what they believed back then, so we put a little bit of it into uh, the book written for antiquity first. Because, well, people would just believe there were people who could see the future. Because of con men. Isaiah vouches for God's righteous servant by describing him. The unnamed man <laughs> it's me. Who fulfills all the verses is a prophet of God and all the people are to believe in him. Isaiah vouches for me by describing me. From well, he knew I was going to be God's representation and righteous servant Moshe. I'm sure if he wrote 70 chapters somewhere in there, God told him the anointed one is Moshe and he's the anointed one because the Spirit of God lights upon him and God is in his spirit. That makes you a man in divine beings when that happens, and it did. That when I was a toddler, <laughs> Jeremiah says it's in the womb. God said, what are we going to do sitting in a womb? Now we wait for you to be born. 
did not reveal himself to me until I was 50 years old. And um, orchestrated my life, a life of suffering, pain, grievous injuries, familiar with disease and crushed with disease, but given long life. And I have seen my children. That is the fulfillment. That story is the fulfillment of 53, verse 10. From chapter 10, part 5. It is forbidden to doubt or debate the prophecy of a prophet who has been found to be right time and time again. Or the prophecy of a prophet who has been vouched for by another prophet. That's where they picked it up. Moses vows for Joshua. And it is also forbidden to test him excessively or forever. For one who tests him is like one who tests God. For it is written, Do not test the Lord your God as you tested him in Massa. When we said, is the Lord among us or not? I think they wanted water. Once it has become known that he is a prophet, they will believe and know that God is amongst them. And they will not debate or doubt his words. In accordance with what is written, yet they shall know that there has been a prophet amongst them. God's purpose with his righteous servant does not include the prophecy of future events. He is a teacher of righteousness in this day of the Lord. <laughs> God keeps saying, they have to go look at the earlier verses if you want me to repeat everything needs to be repeated with this. I'm not going to go go watch all either go read the entire book, it's new scripture. I realize it's not canonized yet anyway. It may be one that I don't know, the Hebrews Bible part two. As Elijah, who recounsels families of the Jewish people, one to the other, together through Judaism. It's in Malachi 3. He writes the words of God at God's command and direction as the prophet like Moses and as the anointed one, Moshiach, who God calls my servant, David, a shepherd. He brings the covenant of friendship and as Elijah brings the uh, covenant of sin forgiveness of Jeremiah 31 31, and we'll be involved with securing the Temple Mount for the Third Temple. Oh, wait a minute, we're changing, that's coming out. Well, since this was tight, God has decided he doesn't want uh, his temple on the Temple Mount. It's too small, tainted with Islam, and Jordan controls it. just too many issues. It just needs to be on Mount Zion, preferably in Jerusalem. Jerusalem's just a small part of Mount Zion. Next chapter, 39. Jonah and God's fire of refinement for prophets. Really need to listen to this. Because go ask your rabbi. Go ask your rabbi, what's the fire of refinement in the Hebrew Bible? And he's going to tell you, I've never heard of such a thing. And yet it's in the book of Jonah, the book of Job, most definitely Ezekiel, where it's actually defined. And you learn what it is, although the words fiber refinement aren't used. That's what God calls it, and I call it God's boot camp for prophets. <laughs> it's like being a cadet and, want, and going through a boot camp to become a Green Bay Marine. A Green Beret Marine. Um... Taking, uh, taking a wild horse or a Navy SEAL. Taking a wild, breaking a wild horse to be ridden. Now, I'm from Texas. And if you've ever seen what they do to that horse, you just shake your head. 
They, they just beat on him until he just, you know, get on, let's go. Okay. That's kind of how I feel right now. Okay, I gotta reset the memory card.